What up, guys? Carolina Jackpot coming at you on Monday afternoon. The news is official now out of Columbia, South Carolina. Tavian Feaster, former four-star, running back for the Clemson Taters, a member of the 2016 and 2018 National Championship teams, will be joining the Gamecocks as a graduate transfer after his summer classes are over August the 5th. I'm looking forward to having him uh, as part of the team. Um, despite the fact he can only play one season, uh, this is a good time for him to be coming to help us out. We need all the help we can get. Uh, we've got some tough opponents this year. We've got some teams that are always good, but yet this year they are right near the top of college football. we got the number one, two, and three teams in the country uh, in most preseason polls that we're going to end up playing this year. Um, we have a tough Missouri team on the schedule, tough Florida team, uh, tough Texas A&M team on the road. we got an upstart Tennessee team on the schedule too. So, yeah, I mean, I am – oh, let me mention, we got Kentucky on the schedule too because they always bitch that we don't ever give any credit. So we got Kentucky, who we've somehow lost to five years in a row on the schedule. We need his help. I mean, we really do – in the running back position. And one thing that I like about him coming in and being – he's not hes not an elite back, okay? He's not a flashy back, and he's not going to win the Heisman Trophy. <laughs> None of that. So let's just get all that out. You can sit there and say, well, we didn't get a lot of reps at Clemson. The reason he didn't get a lot of reps at Clemson, I just don't think that his talent – you know, coming out of high school in Spartanburg, South Carolina, he was a high four-star. He was the number two player on that class that year, 2016. He would have been their number one recruit if Dexter Lawrence had been there. He was very highly touted, and that just didn't really transition over to the college field. I mean, he never really um, made that big splash like he was expected to. You know, And he had his opportunities in 2016 as a freshman. And in 2017, um, before Travis Etienne kind of sort of burst on the scene a little bit sort of midway through the season, people started to see how talented Etienne was, and he eventually took over the starting role, and the rest is history. Um, Feaster was playing behind some really good offensive lines at Clemson. You know, I, I, I talk crap about him a lot, and, and, you know, we go back and forth about stuff, but, I mean, the, the Mitch Hyatts of the world – and the other offensive linemen they have had some elite level talents up there, okay? And the fact that he was only, you know, gaining 700 yards in his best season is not indicative of an uber talented back. I mean, it's just not. You know, let's face facts he'll come down to Columbia and he will probably end up being the number one back on the depth chart. After summer practice is over with before the UNC game, I fully expect that. But I also think that this may be a good thing to kind of push Rico Dowdle, who's also a senior back for us, to work a little harder. I think that they Will Muschamp's had some problems out of him uh, in the past couple of years as far as work ethic, as far as, you know, maybe not putting putting his heart and soul into the game. I got to maybe just push him just a little bit, give him that little extra nudge that he needs to uh, perform well also. I mean, and, and, and that kind of competition is good competition. Mon Denson is a back for South Carolina that I really like a lot. Um, he's the uh, power uh, type back, the one who kind of stays in between the guards and tackles. You know, he's not going to bust it to the outside, but he will kill you up the middle if given the chance. Um, Deshaun Fenwick uh, showed some flashes last year of being really good. Uh, as a freshman, uh, we got Kevin Harris coming in um, and Levante Valentine, another young kid who didn't play a lot last year. And then A.J. Turner, who's been there uh, for three years as well. It seems like he's been there for 10 for some reason. Uh, he's actually spending some time at defensive back. So, you know, with a, a roster now, now that is going to become this deep uh, as far as bodies – in our running back stable, maybe A.J. goes back to the defensive side of the ball. I don't know if I really like that or not. I liked – he's been the best running back down there, uh, quite frankly, as far as I can see for the past few years. Uh, maybe not the most talented, but he's been the best as far as production goes. So, uh, he's coming in. Look at it, though, with guarded optimism. Just remember, played behind an elite offensive line up there. Didn't really – 
pan out all that great. Um, so the level of offensive line, at which our offensive line, we got three returning starters. We lost our best offensive lineman from last year in Zach Bailey to graduation. Um, I think that by the midway point of the season, this line will be as good as last year's was. Um, maybe a little bit better. I think that they're working really hard in the off season, getting stronger, getting better, also getting better help Jake Bentley's game. A third and three situation is a lot more uh, favorable than a third and eight, third and nine situation all the time as far as moving the chains. Uh, when, when Bentley, it seems like, has to make these throws over and over where it's all riding on him to make this throw to keep the drive alive, it seems like he, he screws up a lot. Um, so just keeping him out of that kind of pressured situation, I think is going to be a good thing. But once again, I mean, guarded optimism. I'm glad he's here, but, you know, I think that we could have won games without him. But this could be good. I mean, it could be good for one win. I mean, I don't know. I mean, we really don't know until we he gets out there in place. I mean, we, we just don't know because it's, it's, it's a proven commodity, but yet it's kind of an unproven commodity as well. I don't know. He was really good in high school, so I don't know if the fact that he didn't have eye-popping numbers at Clemson is because he just really isn't that good, or maybe he just wasn't all that happy there. Maybe that just wasn't the right fit for him and, and just now realized it once he had the opportunity to leave. Who knows? I don't know. But uh, we're glad to have you here. Tater fans, for the most part, that I've heard have been nice. They've been cordial towards him for leaving. They've appreciated what he's done. Um, thank you for you know being a part of the team. You're always going to be a Tiger all this stuff, and that's the kind of stuff you like to hear. There's a few of them who have said those things, but then they they slide it in there with a, he's going to have a hard time being able to move the ball behind that offensive line. Dee -ba -dee -ba -dee -ba. That's the ones that you know. I don't think that their that their uh, their heart was really in what they said because they had to make that disparaging comment. Oh, he would have been better off at Virginia Tech. How would what, how would he have been better off at Virginia Tech to lose to Old Dominion? I mean, come on, Virginia Tech is a team that peaked uh, in the 1990s from 2011 uh, since – or since 2011. It's been just a mediocre program, a mediocre program uh, that has not lived up to expectations in billing under this coach, Justin Fuentes. I don't blame him for not wanting to go there. I really don't. It's a beautiful place, but that's about it. And some of the Tater fans are really kind of nasty towards him. Um, you know, that stuff just don't have no place in uh, – college football fan bases anywhere it just does not it's still a young man I mean you don't need to you don't need to disparage him that way or talk to him it doesn't matter where he's going to play you can say I hope you have a great season again every game except for when you play us something like that that's about how I'd be about it but at any rate guys I'm going to get off here and uh go Gamecocks and uh go number four spurs up to my toes up